Exercise 25. Listen to the first part of each of the talks and decide on the topic of each talk. Number 1. The first part of Talk 1 is... Welcome to Biology 101. I'm Professor Martin, and this is your laboratory assistant, Peter Smith. What is the topic of Talk 1? Number 2. The first part of Talk 2 is... In yesterday's class, we discussed the volcanoes located in the area known as the Ring of Fire, an area which basically encircles the Pacific and includes the United States' Mount St. Helens, as well as Japan's Mount Fuji and Argentina's Aconcagua, the highest mountain in the Western Hemisphere. Most of the world's approximately 500 active volcanoes are located along the Ring of Fire, and the eruptions that take place there are among the most violent in the world. Today, we are going to discuss the volcanoes of Hawaii, which are quite different from the volcanoes in the Ring of Fire. What is the topic of Talk 2? Number 3. The first part of Talk 3 is... I hope you've enjoyed your visit so far in Washington, D.C. Today we're going on a tour of the Smithsonian. What is the topic of Talk 3? Exercise 26. Listen to the first part of each of the talks and try to imagine the situation. Then answer the questions in the text. Talk 1. Listen to the beginning of Talk 1 and try to imagine the situation. Welcome to Biology 101. I'm Professor Martin and this is your laboratory assistant, Peter Smith. This course meets twice a week for lecture and once a week for laboratory assignments. Number 1. Who is probably talking? Number 2. Where does the talk probably take place? Number 3. When does the talk probably take place? Number 4. What course is being discussed? Talk 2. Listen to the beginning of Talk 2 and try to imagine the situation. In yesterday's class, we discussed the volcanoes located in the area known as the Ring of Fire, an area which basically encircles the Pacific and includes the United States' Mount St. Helens, as well as Japan's Mount Fuji and Argentina's Aconcagua, the highest mountain in the Western Hemisphere. Most of the world's approximately 500 active volcanoes are located along the Ring of Fire, and the eruptions that take place there are among the most violent in the world. Today, we are going to discuss the volcanoes of Hawaii, which are quite different from the volcanoes in the Ring of Fire. Number 1. Who is probably talking? Number 2. Where does the talk probably take place? Number 3. When does the talk probably take place?
Number four. What course is being discussed? Talk three. Listen to the beginning of talk three and try to imagine the situation. I hope you've enjoyed your visit so far in Washington, D.C. Today we're going on a tour of the Smithsonian. Number one. Who is probably talking? Number two. Where does the talk take place? Number three. When does the talk take place? TOEFL Exercise 27. Listen to each complete talk and answer the questions that follow. Talk 1. Questions 1 through 5. Listen to a talk given by a professor. Welcome to Biology 101. I'm Professor Martin, and this is your laboratory assistant, Peter Smith. This course meets twice a week for lecture and once a week for laboratory assignments. The text for this course is Introduction to Biological Sciences by Abramson. You should get the text and read the first chapter before the next class. You will also need to get the laboratory manual that accompanies the text. I've passed out a copy of the course syllabus. This syllabus lists the reading assignments and exam dates. Note that we will cover one chapter a week for each of the next 15 weeks in the semester, and there will be three exams throughout the course. Grades in this course are based on your exam grades and your grades on the laboratory assignments. Are there any questions? Number one. When does this talk probably take place? Number two. How often will Professor Martin give lectures? Number three. What is the assignment for the next class? Number four. What information is given in the syllabus? Number five. What will the professor use to determine the final course grades? Talk 2. Questions 6 through 10. Listen to a lecture given by a professor. In yesterday's class, we discussed the volcanoes located in the area known as the Ring of Fire, an area which basically encircles the Pacific and includes the United States Mount St. Helens, as well as Japan's Mount Fuji and Argentina's Aconcagua, the highest mountain in the Western Hemisphere. Most of the world's approximately 500 active volcanoes are located along the Ring of Fire, and the eruptions that take place there are among the most violent in the world. Today, we are going to discuss the volcanoes of Hawaii, which are quite different from the volcanoes in the Ring of Fire. Hawaiian volcanoes are not located along the Ring of Fire and are therefore not caused by the movement of the Earth's plates against each other. Instead, Hawaii is located in the middle of the Ring of Fire, above a massive plate rather than where two plates meet. The result is that Hawaiian volcanoes are much gentler than those in the Ring of Fire. 
Hawaiian volcanoes have much less gas in them, which causes less explosive eruptions, and the lava in Hawaiian volcanoes is thinner, which results in mounds that are long and low, rather than high and steep, because the lava flows farther and builds mounds gradually with long, low slopes. Mauna Loa, the name of one of Hawaii's most famous volcanoes, actually means long mountain. Number six. What was the topic of yesterday's lecture? Number seven. What is the topic of today's lecture? Number eight. Where are most of the world's active volcanoes located? Number nine. What is characteristic of Hawaii's volcanoes? Number 10. What is Mauna Loa? Talk 3. Questions 11 through 15. Listen to a talk about the Smithsonian. I hope you've enjoyed your visit so far in Washington, D.C. Today we're going on a tour of the Smithsonian. The Smithsonian is actually several museums, each with a different focus, situated together on a mall. These museums in total have more than 60 million items on exhibit. The first Smithsonian Museum we'll visit is the Museum of Natural History, which has various types of stuffed animals and exhibits showing the lifestyles of early American Indians and Eskimos. From the Museum of Natural History, we'll go on to the National Air and Space Museum, where we'll see displays that show the development of flight. In this museum, you can see the airplane that Orville Wright used to make his first flight and the airplane that Charles Lindbergh used to cross the Atlantic. After we visit those two museums as a group, You'll have free time to visit some of the other Smithsonian museums, the Museum of American History, the Smithsonian Arts and Industries Building, and the various art museums located on the Smithsonian Mall. After our trip to the Smithsonian today, we'll go on to the White House and Capitol Building tomorrow. Number 11. Who is probably giving this talk? Number 12. How many items are on exhibit in the Smithsonian Museums? Number 13. According to the talk, which museum has exhibits of early Eskimos? Number 14. Which museum will they visit as a group? Number 15. Where will they go tomorrow?